The human skeleton can be divided up into an appendicular and axial skeleton. The appendicular applies to the limbs, while the axial consists of the skull and the vertebral column. The vertebral column functions to protect the spinal cord, which courses through the vertebral canal. Additionally, it supports the weight of the body and serves as site of muscle attachment and protection for the internal organs. The vertebral column can be divided up into cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and coccygeal vertebra. We will first take a look at the cervical vertebra. There are seven cervical vertebra numbered from superior to inferior. The first cervical vertebra, otherwise known as the atlas, supports the weight of the skull, while the axis serves as a point of rotation around the dens, a unique bony feature allowing for increased range of motion in this region. Additionally, the cervical vertebra have transverse foramen which transmit the vertebral artery which gives blood supply to the posterior aspect of the brain. Next, we will move more inferiorly to investigate the 12 thoracic vertebra. The thoracic vertebra serve as attachment sites for the ribs posteriorly, while anteriorly the ribs attach to the sternum in the manubrium. Here we can see that the manubrium is located superior to the body of the sternum, while the xiphoid process is located inferior. Additionally, we can see that the first rib attaches on the lateral aspects of the manubrium, while the second rib attaches at the sternal angle between the junction of the manubrium and the body of the sternum. The ribs attach to the thoracic vertebra via the transverse processes as well as the vertebral body. Uniquely on the thoracic vertebra we can see the overlap of the head and neck of the rib up to the articular tubercle. We can see that each of the ribs articulates with more than one thoracic level, making this a strong site of overlap and attachment of the ribs and thus making it difficult for dislocation of these structures. Additionally, the spinous processes begin to elongate in this region, as well as articular facets change orientation to allow for lateral flexion. The last vertebra we will investigate in this video are the five lumbar vertebra. We see that these vertebral bodies increase in size even more than the thoracic, as this region is responsible for transmitting motion and weight from the lower limbs up to the abdominal and thoracic cavities. We will now take a look at two individual lumbar vertebra. Here we can see that the vertebral bodies are in an anterior orientation, while the vertebral arch is oriented posteriorly. The vertebral arch consists of the pedicles as well as the lamina and the transverse and spinous processes. Often, arthritis may affect not only the intervertebral joints, but the zygopophyseal joints seen here between the superior and inferior articular facets.